minutes. All right, so um, this is about things which have always existed in VI, which I hope will be of interest to at least a tiny minority of you. It should have to be 25%. Um, since I learned VI long before BIM came around, I learned to get around pretty quickly in just VI, and uh, here are some of my tricks. So one of my favorite commands is the dot, because you can do so much with it, you can make any change over again uh, without having to depend it being part of a pattern or anything like that. So um, if anybody not use dot a lot, I can give you some examples. I you don't? Never. Yeah. Okay, <laughs> so uh, unfortunately I can't um, stay in my slideshow and still do things. Uh, now, is that big enough? I'd like it larger. Okay. Say when. <clears throat> That's probably the best one. Yep. Let's see. Clear the screen, please. So we what? Clear the screen, please. You want to get rid of this one? That's my notes. No, no. Clear, clear. Oh, oh. you think you could do a clear on the, on the shell? On the shell. Oh, okay. I will in a second. Um, okay, so... Um, I have to find the file. So this is a Ruby program. Um, and let's say for some reason, okay, so I just, I did a DW and deleted the comment character and the space. And if I hit dot, I can just keep doing that. I'll give it in here too, so. So that's one example. But then what if you wanted to insert a comment in front of this line? Well, one way to do that would be use a capital I to insert the beginning and then type in um, a pound sign in the space. And then wherever else you want to do that, you just have to hit dot. So it's just, whoops, I didn't want to do it there. So it's just a really nice program. Once you start doing it, you will start doing it a lot, uh, using the dot for everything. Uh, I don't know, let's say I want to add periods at the end of the line. I can use a capital A and a period, get out of input mode, and then just keep doing that. Um, and it's kind of hard to give great examples, but once you get used to the idea that you can do it, these examples will just start coming up. I'm going to restore this thing. Everybody know about the E bang, colon E bang? Okay, so colon gets you down to the original command line mode, which existed before there was even VI, when it was still called EX. <laughs> and uh, there are a number of commands you can do there. It's one of the several modes of VI. Uh, and E reads back in the same file. But if you change it, it won't let you. So if I do colon E, it's going to say no write since last change. Add a bang to override. So colon E bang will restore this to the shape it was in before I started making changes. Right, so that's the dot. Another really nice one is a tilde. This doesn't seem to exist in other editors at all, but the tilde up, up cases or down cases depending on what the word is. So typing in uppercase is annoying. Um, so we can go over here and just say, I don't know, let's say, I'll put my cursor over here on the next. Everybody with me? Let me know if I go too fast. Hit a tilde, and then I can just hold down the dot to keep uppercasing. Or let's say you want to capitalize. So I'll go to the beginning of this word one, press a dot, which is still the tilde. You can press a tilde, but it takes an upshift. And then uh, press W to go to the next word w to go to the next word, then dot, w dot, w dot. So if you've written something you want to turn into a title, 
you can take it out of your text, put it up at the top, capitalize it that way pretty quickly. Um, percent finds matching braces and brackets and angle brackets. Uh, that's really useful in programming. Uh, however, most modern BIMs show it to you anyway, so you don't really need it. Um, but if you have big if block, then you cannot see it, if it cannot fit in your screen. Right, but it will, if you use a percent, it will jump to the other. That's right, that's, that's why it's useful. It's very good. Okay, and I already mentioned a capital A. A is for append, but capital A appends at the end of the line. I is for insert, but capital I inserts. Unfortunately, not at the beginning of the line, but in front of the first non-blank character. So, like, if you're using it to comment things out, and you want the comments to be in the same column, but you have indented text, indented code underneath an if statement or a while or whatever, that's not going to do it for you quite as easily. You can still do it, but not this way. Any questions? So, I guess these aren't. Man, it's still the middle of the fair is learning them, but oh, you okay. know how they have, they have, I mean, it's traditionally it's like the, what is it, the, it's, okay, what you want to do and then what you're doing, so it would be like, if you were doing delete, delete to the end of the line, it's like the dollar, yeah, dollar, so with the uppercase, could, or with the tilde, is it just like, the it's tilde the is a single, on. Is the key on. But it, once you use it, it moves the cursor up one character to the right. Okay. So if you keep pressing it, you keep doing the one you're on. So, yeah. So some, um, actually it's more complicated than what you said. Like, um, if you say DD to delete a line, you can say 3DD to right. delete three lines. Right, right. Well, that's what I was, so you can, like, do three to give you yeah, you should be able to. I never have. I'm embarrassed to say. So let's find out. I guess that's what my question was. Can right. you use it that's in that? One. In that. Uh, so let's see if I can do a. Let's see. Right over here on imps, <coughs> I'll do a four tilde. Oops. Or I'll hit the wrong key. And do something weird. So four tilde. Uh, okay. So it does fall in it. Yeah. Okay. All right. Cool. Here's a weird one, which should work. Um, you know, X deletes a character, right? And X2 should delete two characters. Let's try that. Here. 2X. No, 2X. You have to do 2X. It doesn't yeah. work. Never mind. Uh, However, right. this might work. Okay. So if I want to delete three characters, this is actually later in the presentation, I can say D. 3L. Because L is a motion command and D works with any motion command. So I want to delete three characters. Let's delete the per out of perhaps D3L. I would say D3L. Okay, so that can be very useful. I'm going to undo that. And now I'm going to say 2D3L and see what happens. And it deleted six characters. Yeah. Two times three. <laughs> it did the D3L twice. Why would that be useful? Well, if you think of a reason, let me know. But <laughs> uh, I can't think of one. But that's the way it works. So you can have modifiers after a command if they're modifying something else, and modifiers before a command, which is repetition. Okay. So back to our super presentation, which I threw together today. By the way, I got a question for you. Let me finish this one, yes. Uh, how would I have made it work? So also, how do you do a pointer on this? Is there a way? Uh, not usually. Um, okay. I usually just have it set up. If I want to call something out, I have it uh. put in a Gotcha. An extra box. So, you know, in HTML you have these definition lists. So, if this I, which I'm pointing at, but you can't see where I'm pointing, but it's on the upper left, um, is the thing to define, and the, the rest of it is that 
definition, is there a way to do that in Keynote so that the anywhere would be indented with the insert? Do you have to use a table or something? Oh, um, yeah, I would assume so. I'm li I mean, for a bulleted list without the bullets. You sh there should be like an intention, like a... Yeah, well, but if you indent it, it, it moves the whole thing over. Uh, Watch. So, um, here. No, but if you highlight that whole, like, highlight. No, if he, if he's talking about if he hits tab, it's going to move it in one bullet level. See? Moves the whole thing in. He, want, he mm -hmm. wants to do internal paragraphs. I want to have... Right. I think I'm it's saying, columns that I need. I'm saying yeah. you just highlight that, and then... Highlight this? Yeah, the whole thing, the whole line, before I, like from the period, from the friend to the period, and then do it, make me happy. No? No, okay, thanks anyway. It made me happy though. <laughs> <laughs> hey, yeah. if you had the answer, you would have had the answer. Yeah, sorry. Okay, so, okay. So, like I do this a lot. If I have to move things over a variable amount of space, I'll insert one space and then use the dot to do everything else move to where I need to do and keep hitting dot because it's easier than inserting the right amount of space for each thing um, and let's do an example of that so I don't know let's say I have uh, I got this by inserting things in front, or I don't know why, but I want all the stuffs to line up. Let's make them closer. So I'll insert one space, right? Now maybe I'll go over here and keep hitting dot until I get that guy right. Then keep hitting dot until I get that guy right. Um, I don't know of an easier way to do that, even with fancy stuff. Although there sure we might be. Um, here's an idiom for you if you, like me, frequently type reversed letters, like T E H for the. So X P kills the first, you know, deletes the first letter, but it puts it in the um, in a register, and then you use P to paste it back. In other words, it yanks the first letter, and so and um, D. DDP exchanges two lines, and that's very fast. And then there's a D3L thing. Let me just show you those, because we like to reinforce our teaching, right? So let's say uh, I typed in the cat. We can go back here and do XP, and it looks more like the cat. And then uh, I wanted to exchange these two lines very quick. Can you do it one more time? Uh, let me do it backwards. We'll put it back so it now makes sense. Uh -huh. Okay, I'm going to do DD, which deletes that whole line, uh -huh. and, and also P. happens to move the cursor to the next line, and then P Print. puts it back in. Yeah. But the cursor has now been moved, so it winds up reversing them. I think the editor that we shall not name, the initials are E M A C. Mm -hmm. has, has something for doing that too, but I'm not sure what it is. Uh, just one comment on the, the the indentation that you showed. I don't know how you can put indentation or how, how you can do tab between the letters, but I know how you can do multiple indentation on lines. Okay. Multiple lines. So if you want to indent three lines together, then you have to keep your cursor on the first line, and then you you press the number of lines you will have to you want to indent, and then shift and angle bracket like greater than sign two uh, yeah. times, huh. and it will indent three lines to whatever the scheme you have uh, configured in your VMRC file. The default in your, what? In your VMRC file, you configure that how many how, how many spaces oh, you want. That in Vim. Yeah. Oh, okay. I thought you were talking about Keynote. No. no, no. <laughs> yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah, because the greater than is a motion command. Mm -hmm. I think it's a paragraph or something. Or maybe it's, I don't know what it is. I have to look on that one up. Yeah. I use it as an indentation. If I want sentence. to indent a couple of lines, yeah. 
Okay, I'll check that one out. Can you good. use the left one to go backwards? Yeah. I'm always, yeah. yeah it, we can find out. Back and forth. Because we can just use it as a motion command. So let's get rid of that. Yes, yeah, so if you put the cursor on the line that has use of, yeah, and then hit two. Why don't I do uh, just a greater than, see what happens? It will just indent one line. Oh. Oh, that's right. It's an indentation. Yes. Yeah, I remember that. I just never use it. To. So it does it to a tab, which in this case is eight. Mm -hmm. yeah. So I have no MRC going here. Very nice. And there's another one for that. Maybe, no, maybe that's it. Well, there's equals, which does whatever the current set of formatting rules would uh -huh. say. But okay. So moving onward, we killed this one. <coughs> um, so we know about the three L. You go the other way. What do you guess that's going to be? R. What's the opposite of L? H. No, right. We're talking curves, not what. Yeah, no, we're, yeah, we're just talking about directions of the... Right. So, in my entire life, I've never used D3H or anything like that. Does it, yeah. need, does it work with the arrow keys? I don't use the arrow keys. But probably, yes. <laughs> <laughs> you know why? Because then when you get to the command line, you can't use the arrow keys. You want to re-edit your command line in Unix or Linux. You better know how to do it without the arrow key, because the arrow key is escape capital A or something like that. And command line in Unix doesn't like that. It'll put, put it there and then come and it'll say command not found. <laughs> I don't know what uh, Mac OS X is a little different. What will it do? Uh, let me make this one bigger. Let me make it smaller here. Can you see it okay? Mm -hmm. So if I use, um, if I do LSS and I want to backspace, and I use the delete key, well, the delete key will work. Mm -hmm. But if I use an arrow key, hey, made a liar out of me. Yeah. So it works, works in, it work, you know what? It probably works in Bash, but it doesn't work in Corn Shell. Yeah, because it works okay on Red Hat. Yeah, mm -hmm. it must work okay in Bash. Yeah, yeah the different shells probably handle and, that. And I that know situation. when I used to do that by accident on the corn shell, it was a, a problem. Of course, I don't even have at the moment BI on here on my command line. I think it's default, isn't it? No, nah, you know uh, what it is? It's Vim. It's uh, Emacs. Uh, oh. Really? Yeah, watch this. Control A, there's the beginning of the line. Yeah. Oh, oh you're, talk you're talking about those. Yeah, that's that's command line. I think that's why I thought at least Bash used the Emacs. Yeah, by, but by you can set it up to do. But yeah, you can set it up you to just do, do it in your uh, yeah. initialization file. Put set minus o bi, uh -huh. which but I always had, but I always tell myself I should learn Emacs. So. I think because probably because Bash was a new like a new project, mm -hmm. they just defaulted to the Emacs bindings. They probably all wrote, you know, all the people who wrote it mm -hmm. used Emacs. Oh wait, we weren't supposed to say that name, sorry. All right, moving onward. Okay, so the next slide. All right, now this is the one that resulted in this talk, as I mentioned it at a previous meeting, people didn't know about it. So you can essentially run all or part of your file through any Unix command and then have the output of the command replace whatever you fed into it. In other words, you feed some part of your file, including all of it, possibly all of it, through a command and then the output of the command replaces that part of your file. The, the syntax is colon and then however much of your file that you want to feed into it, and then a bang, and then the command. So this is a real good one, so let's try it. Um, okay, I'm gonna 
Q-Bang out of this. You know that one, right? Colon Q-Bang. Mm -hmm. That lets you quit without saving your changes. Mm -hmm. Colon Q lets you quit as long as you haven't made any changes. Colon Q-Bang lets you quit even if you have made changes, and then you lose the changes. And then if you, a normal flow in the old days, in the EX editor was, you do a colon W to write the content to your file, and then colon Q to get out. Or you do colon WQ. So I first learned EX. Did not learn ED. That was that came before. Yeah. EX was the improvement at, from Berkeley for ED, which was the AT and T editor. AT and T editor had one error message, a question mark, <laughs> and it had one result message, silent. I mean, one success message, <laughs> silence. <laughs> Uh, I, it was pretty, well I never used it, but you had to be a real nerd to use it. All right, so, all right, so here's a file, um, and I'm going to pass part of it through the Unix format command, because it'll make it into nice paragraphs. But there's some problems here. Um, so, you know, when you're editing a text file, you often wind up with lines that are short because you insert text and you start a new line in order to insert new text. You don't get uh, nice paragraph boundaries, um, like this indented one here. So first I'm just going to pass the whole file through the format command and see what happens. It's not going to work right, but I'll tell you why. But some interesting things will happen. So, here we go. So I need range of the whole file. What, what's the range for the whole file? 50. Percent. Uh, yeah. Um, okay, let me talk about ranges. Can I talk about ranges? Yeah, because I don't understand. Ranges. Okay, oh, okay, no problem. Do we need to write Yes. Well, we have the whiteboard yet. Oh. You can just take it off. It's I'm having attachment problems. <laughs> Attachment issues. All right. So there are several ways to define range. Um, the easiest is line numbers. You could just say ten, comma fifteen. Okay. However, there are some certain shortcuts you can use. Like you can say. Um, dot for wherever your cursor is. So you could say dot comma 15. Or you could say dot comma dollar, which means from wherever your cursor is to the end of the file. Um, you can use one for the beginning of the file because it's the first line. I don't think there's a shortcut for that one. So yeah. uh, sorry. when you're using the dot for like the dot 15, is that the 15 then relative to? No. It is not okay. No. I think if you use a it plus or a minus in front of the 15. Yes, you can do that too. You can say dot, comma, dot, plus three. Or you can say 15, comma, 15 plus three. Although so you might be able to figure that one out in your head. Okay. So the range then just goes whichever direction. If 15 is above where That's a good question. Or does it get nothing? Yeah, <laughs> I'm not sure. I've always made my ranges contain things. But, um, and I haven't ever, I don't remember making that mistake and seeing what happened, but I, I don't know. So the other thing is you can set marks in your file, which you probably don't know how to do yet. Uh, and they're great. What? I have set marks before, although. Okay, so the basic marks, we're going to get to marks later on this. The basic marks are small a through small z. Mm -hmm. And you create a mark by saying ma, and then you refer to it in a range or anywhere else by saying apostrophe A. So I often put a mark somewhere, and then I say, my mark is called A, I'll move the cursor to wherever I want the end of the block to be, and say, quote A, comma, dot. And I'll show you that in here. Yeah. So that is some marks. Are there any other marks? I, I mean, uh, some ranges. And, and of course, percent. Uh, I'm not doing a good percent. 
<laughs> back, I think we all know what a percent looks like. Slash. Yeah. So a percent is the whole file. So that came in about uh, in EX. You used to have to do one comma dollar in ED. It's a big, you know, revolutionary improvement. All right. So let's do a few more. I hope you got some of that. You probably just got a lot of static from the fan on on this thing. I, I can always fall back to the camera. Okay. All right. So for since we've been talking about marks, I'm going to put a mark right here. I'm going to say M A. You can see a lot of exciting things happen on the screen, namely nothing. And then I'm going to move down to here, and just for fun, I'm going to say quote A without doing anything else and it'll move me back to my mark. So you can put bookmarks in your file while you're working on it. If there's some functions you're working on, but you have to move away, put some marks there, forget which ones they are, laboriously find it again, put the mark there, and forget where it is again. So, but it, if you can remember, if you're not, let's say, my age, then um, they can be very handy. Um, so my mark is still there. See if I can do quote A, pops right back up. So if I move down to here, I now have a range I can pass into the format command because I can say, quote A, comma dot. So let's try that. I'm going to do a colon, puts me down to the bottom. And I'm going to say, quote A, comma dot. And the bang says, pass that range through the command. And the format command is nice and short because my theory is that the early Unix designers that really hit it to dipe, or they just didn't have a lot of fingers. <laughs> so this is going to pass the paragraph from create down through deleting through the format command, and the output of the format command will replace it. And notice it, it keeps the indentation, but by default, I think it goes out to column 70, and basically wraps the lines at column 70, or maybe it's 65. I don't know. We can find out with man. Which gives me a chance to show you something else. Uh, first of all, let me undo that. Now, if you do a colon and don't put a range and use a bang, it will run the command, but it'll just display the results. It won't affect your file at all. So let's just do man fmt and see what the default width is for formatting. Um, Where is it? Gosh. Is it 72? No. Defaults to 65, it looks like. Yeah, that's oh, what I thought. Where did you see that? It's like the fourth line of that paragraph. Oh, yeah, there it is. Where it clearly says the goal defaults to 65. Yeah, I thought it was 65. I just wasn't sure. So I'm going to queue out of this. And now it says see it, press enter to, or type command to continue. I do that, I'll be back in BI. I mean, BIM. Okay, so if we wanted to do the same thing but make it, let's say, 78, we could just override, you know, use an option on the format command. So here's a nice feature of BIM that did not exist in BI. It remembers your colon commands, your EX commands. I up arrow to that. I'll put a minus W78. And and I hit something which I shouldn't have hit, so I don't know what it was. Oh, wait a second. You I had no range. Command again. Didn't have the range, so we can find that again. There it is. See that? It's the colon, quote A, comma dot, bang, FMT. Anybody listening to this thinks we're just spouting random... <laughs> random uh, letters. Letters. Work. Why didn't you work? Oh, you your your dot was the same as your. Yes. So very good. Thank you. Okay. So now. Okay. So now it made it go out farther to the right. So you and you can make it smaller. Um, okay. Have a just to be safe. Move the cursor to the right place for once. Let's make it fifty. Like a lot of Unix options, the space between the minus option letter. And the value is optional. Okay, so that made it even 
better. Now, here's a neat thing. I'm going to do the whole file. Percent, bang, format. So the nice thing is it won't squish it all into one big paragraph. A blank line means to FMT format that uh, you're starting a new one. However, it'll be interesting to see what happens. For example, like right here, what'll happen? Yeah. And it kept it there, see? It respected the indentation. However, it's it didn't work here because there's a space there. It thinks it's an indentation, so it thinks it's a new paragraph that just happens to be indented. And the same thing here. So you do have to watch for that. That's not a VIM issue or a VI issue, but if you want format to work correctly, you've got to fix things like that. Let's do that and do it again. Now. Okay, and now it did it right. So when you're splitting lines to insert new text, if you wind up with a blank at the beginning of the next line, format's not going to help you. Any questions on that? Uh, let's do something else. Why don't we sort something? I believe I had something here to do that with. Okay, so I have um, something I'm going to use regular expressions to turn into a kind of artificial backup script. But I've got these file names here. I'm, I think these are very good file names because they're very illustrative. <laughs> and um, they're not in order. So why don't we sort them right in our BI file? So I'll do MA, which you can't see, move down to the end, do quote A, comma dot, bang, sort. And now they're sorted. So there's nothing particular about the bang command here. You can use any command on your system with it. It just runs, it pipes whatever part of your file you've selected into an external command, <coughs> captures the output, puts it back into the file to replace whatever you did. Here's a nice one which I think is in the presentation but we haven't talked about it like yet. Uh, let's say you're writing a log or a diary, okay? And each time you start to write, you want to put in the date and time. Which you can do with your watch, or you can look up here. But you can also just do bang, bang, date. Hello. It will, however, replace whatever line you were on, so watch out for that. Bang, bang is short for colon, dot as the range, and then a bang, and then the command. So what it's showing is colon dot bang. Yeah. So I know. Yeah. Bang, bang. I just type bang bang. Two exclamation points. Yes. Okay. Uh, now let, I'm going to stay right on that line. That's in the presentation, so we'll get to that in a second. I'm going to stay right on that line. I'm going to do bang bang ls. And unfortunately, obliterated my date because I forgot what I just told you before to do that on a blank line. If you'd have your you're, you're passing that blank line as standard input to the ls command, which doesn't read its standard input. Just like the date command, you can pass standard input to it, it just won't read it. But, it. but VI will obliterate that line with the output from the date command or the ls command. Questions? Okay, good. This is more interesting to you than I was afraid it would be. Um, so there's a whole world of Unix commands out there, um, and sort, date, ls, um, format. Format's great. I crap up something in a text file that I've created in an editor, just get out of that editor, put it in BI, I mean Vim, and format it with the FMT command. Like if you're writing comments in a program, what you would do is delete the comment character at the beginning. You got a whole long line of character comments and you've inserted some text and now it's screwed up. Just, you know, use regular expressions to delete the comment character in the space, reformat, use regular expressions to put that back in, which we will see 
how to do in a minute. Questions? So there's the bang bang command example on the second line and shows you what it turns into. In VI it never showed you that, it just did it. In Vim it shows you it for some reason. And then there's the last example. If you do bang without a range, I forgot to show the colon there. There should be a colon there. Um, won't work unless you're on the colon command line officially called the EX command line. So let me fix that. Let me learn how to type. By the way, I just deleted those characters by saying control D. <laughs> um, I don't know. It's like Emacs has crept into everything. So that oh. sort of just lets you preview whatever you might be doing. What does? So that would let you... This is where you write it. This is the keynote. No, oh, no, 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 he's no, talking no. about I mean, the bang like command. The thing. bang command, instead of like, like you could use that to preview what you want to do. Oh, yes, but really you can't because like if you're you trying to see what a sort would do, it's not going to have anything to sort. Right, right, okay. It'll sort that one line you give it. Gotcha. So it depends on the command, I guess. Yeah, yeah. All right. exactly. But for example, let's, I don't know, what, keeping track of what files you have on a particular day, you can use ls or ls minus l, or you could get some output of some other program and save it. You probably would do it in a more automatic way, automatic, automated way, but this allows you to do it. Well, and I guess just hitting, what is it, you for undo or whatever would just. Yeah. It's just as easy. Oh, that, that will let you preview. Yeah, if you screw something up, like with regular expressions, you is your friend. Yeah. <laughs> all right, so we got through all of this. Okay, so here are some nice commands you can use uh, with the bang and beyond. Marks. Okay, now there's already a presentation on marks. Was it from you? He did registers, but you talked about marks oh, a little okay. bit already. Right. Okay. So, um, capital letter marks can be in other files, and Vim keeps track of them in its .vim info file, which, if you look at, has way more stuff than you would expect. I never use these, but I guess the idea is if you do quote capital A, you go to wherever your mark is in any other file. Mm -hmm. Like I said, I've never used it. But here's a thing on marks. Um, oh, you can see my cursor. Oh. But it wasn't there before, oh. was it? It made a liar out of me now. Yeah, but it's not here. And if you moved your mouse, it probably showed back up. What? No, I'm moving it. <coughs> you can't oh. see your uh, pointer? Yeah. Mm -hmm. I don't know. Is it mirroring or is it like? I don't know. It was on that screen. It's not on this screen. <laughs> All right. So here's a how to use marks. Um, M A creates the mark. Quote A refers to the mark, but by line. If you do back quote A, it actually refers to the particular column on the line where you place the mark. So I've almost never used that. You can delete to a mark by saying D quote A, just like you could say D anything else. Same with change, same with yank, plus colon marks lists all your marks, including marks in other files. So if I do colon marks here, here's my A mark. Um, oh, and there's a, a special mark called quote. So you access by saying quote, quote. And It'll let you basically jump back to the last place you were on the file. Mm -hmm. Doesn't seem totally consistent, but it's if you uh, if you use a command like a jump command, like if you jump to a new mark or if you jump to the last line of the file with like shift G or something. Uh, and then if you do quote quote, you go back where you were. Yeah. Okay, so those are my two marks. I only have two current marks, but here's a mark, a capital Z, 
I must have been playing around with it because I have. Let's see what happens if I do quote capital Z, and then there are numbered marks that I forget what they have to do with. I never use them. Let's see if, if I do capital uh, quote capital Z. Oh, so it wants to go to that other file, but it won't let me because I made changes to this one. So let's not do. It. They're basically just there for completeness. All right, so what's next? Okay, you can also read a file into a file. Put the cursor wherever you want to, do colon R and put the file name. Nice thing is, let's say you want to transfer something from one file to another. I'm sure there are more sophisticated ways to do this, but you can write out all or part of your file into another file, then bring up the other place where you want to move that stuff in another BI window and read it in. Like save it as a file called temp, save a paragraph as a file called temp, go to your other file, read in that temp file. So R reads in a file. Again, I don't see a cursor here. I wonder if I, no, I pressed, I pressed on the trackpad and it went to the next page. So that doesn't do it. Um, so we already talked about colon ebang, which uh, basically overwrites whatever changes you made in the current file, backs them all out. C colon W saves the file. I find myself doing a lot of colon W and then doing something else. Like when I was trying to learn how to use um, uh, latex, I colon W my source file, create a PDF and look at it, see how screwed up it was. And then, but I didn't have to get out of the eye. Probably in Emacs, you could just run latex from within Emacs, but, and maybe in VI too, but I don't know how to do it. All right, so, oh, um, what if you started reading a read-only file? I mean, you started, you looked at a read-only file using view, and then it, it's not a file that you have no right access to, but you did view just to be safe in case you accidentally changed something, and then you decide to change something. Um, you can use w, colon w bang and save the changes anyway. So it's only as read-only as you want it, want it to be. Uh, now, if you do a colon W with a file name, it will write out your whole file to, an, to another file. However, the current file will still be the original one. That's different from things like Word for Windows or things like that. Once you save a file under a different name, that's the current name that Word remembers, but VI remembers the original name. Um, plus, you can give that colon W a range so you could say, you know, uh, quote a comma dot w temp and save a block in another file. Now if you're a little confused about where you are in your file, you've been saving a lot of files with other names, you forgot which one you were originally in, colon w will give you that information down at the bottom. So my file was called file backup, even if I wrote out some other stuff, like let's write out, um, we can write out all these file names here, MA to make a mark, move to here, colon, quote A comma dot W temp. That will take those six lines and put them in temp. But if I do colon F, I see I'm still in my original file. But if I do LS, like bang LS, which will not overwrite anything in my file, I'll see that my temp file has been created. <coughs> you said it was colon F? Colon F. For file? Like? Yeah. Oh. It would be so nice if they always told you what the logic behind the mnemonic was, you know, but they don't. But it seems pretty obvious in this case. But capital F does a search. Find, probably. Yeah. Only on one line. Small F goes one way. I never use it, but. Uh -oh. Like if I'm looking for Y, I can say FY, and it went to the Y there in Terry. And I think if I'm over here, and I say capital FY, it goes in that direction. 
but it's only limited to one line. So, not quite sure why it's there. That's a little bit of a obscure one. Okay, so any questions about this? This is taking actually longer than I wanted. Is that okay? I mean, longer yeah. than I expected. Okay. All right, so uh, the next part is the toughie, regular expressions. If you don't know regular expressions, you're not going to learn them tonight. <laughs> um, but regular expressions are a hugely powerful language for doing substitutions, searches and substitutions. And I'm going to show off one of them, a couple of them. Uh, so let's, let me do that first. So here we have a, a file, actually, let's get rid of all this. D capital G, delete to the end, right? And now I'm going to create a backup script, which is going to copy all of the files in this directory to the same name.pack using regular, well, using the things we've seen so far. I'll delete that line. Now we got a line here, so I'm going to, it's a blank line, so it's safe to use bang bang on it, right? So I'll do bang bang ls. You notice it filled it in down there as colon dot bang ls. Now I've got all the files in the directory. And now I'm going to put a mark on this line here, ma. Not very imaginative. I tend to use a. <laughs> and go down to the bottom. I don't have to go down to the bottom because I can always use dollar to mean the end. And then I'm going to do a complicated regular expression, which I'll explain as I go. So I'm going to do quote a comma dot, right, colon quote a comma dot, that's my block, and I'm going to say s for substitute, and then I'm going to just say dot star for the search pattern, that's everything on the line, which happens to be, in this case, the file name. And then I'm going to replace it with cp space ampersand, which stands for what you just found, and ampersand dot back. You don't need to close the second field there unless you use a modifier like G, which I don't need in this case. But I can close it. Okay, so that makes it look better. And now we get a bunch of copy commands, which will copy each file to itself dot back. However, let's say I, for some reason, have this file and I want to return it to its original state. That's a little trickier. Let's see if I can remember it. See if MA is still there. No, it's not. Oh, wait a minute. I, no, never mind. Instead of doing quote A, I did MA, so I moved the dot to the bottom. So let's do move the dot, the uh, mark back up here, MA move back to the bottom for the dot, and now we're going to do a, a messier one. We'll do quote a comma dot s. Now we're going to get rid of the cp by matching on it, and then you can match on parts of a regular expression by putting those parts in, parenthe in parentheses. And then we can refer to them later. So, I'm just going to do dot star in here and then close that weird parentheses with a backslash and add another space. And the thing is, um, I know there's only two spaces in each line. So I know that the dot star will have to match what's between the spaces. Actually, this is simpler than what I put over there, but it should work. And then you refer back to the first parenthesis match with a backslash one. So this ought to do it. But I've never tried this one. I have a more complicated one. Ah, didn't work. Oh, right. I screwed up. So let's uh, go back to a colon again. This thing. We have to match we have to get rid of the same thing dot back. 
So we have to match on that too and just not use it in our replacement. So we have to do dot star like this. And I'll go through this again, but don't, if you don't want, understand it, don't worry about it. Let's just try that to make sure I got it right this time. Backwards range. Okay, so I had a backwards range. I screwed the range, but you see it worked on the first line. Mm -hmm. So now let's get the range right. Okay, so we modified this, this copy file to file that back on each line without knowing what was the contents of what we're matching on, without having to specify it, but remembering what we matched on to get this. So let's look at that regular expression in excruciating detail. Okay, we're saying starts here. First thing is match CP space. Could have just matched three characters. How do we match three characters? Dots. Dot, dot, dot. Um, and then we got our backslashed parenthesis. Now, some of you use Perl. Is this one, that's what I was wondering, this looked like the PREL, the Perl regular expression. It is, but in Perl, you wouldn't need the backslash. Yeah, Vim regular expressions are kind of a weird. They're older. Perl reformed them. And Pro compatible sense. regular expressions let you use matching parentheses without the backslash. On the other hand, in Perl, if you want to match an actual left parenthesis, you, have to do you need a backslash. So it's just a different flavor. Okay, okay so this matches everything up to the next space. Then this matches everything up to the next dot back. And we ignore this one and just in the replacement string, just use what we found in, whoops, it's supposed to be, go away. What we found in this parenthesis here. After that first match, they, or the first sort of group match, you could have just, couldn't you just on like, I think I can dot, just use the dot star dollar string to say, give to everything to the end of the. I think we can do this. I think we can refer to that even last stop. I think, though I've never tried it, we can do a back reference right in the search string. Let's try it. Oh, it's not going to work now because... <laughs> you, know, you can probably run it and it won't do anything yeah, destructive. But it'll save it. Yeah. So now let's undo this. Oh, I'm going the wrong way. Control R a bunch of times. Okay, now let's see. Now we better move the cursor so we have a range. Let's see if that A is still there. Yep. So just for fun, take a look at that one. So did VI actually have, like, did they use regular expressions with VI? Or? Yeah. Yeah. Was it, so this was what? That's how I learned it. Okay, so the the Perl's regular expressions were based on what the I initial or I don't know. They, they were started in the uh, I. They started in ED. Well, I knew that regular expressions had been around a long time, but like all the ones, the older ones, particularly like the command line stuff, with or like with awk and stuff, it was all, you got like the weird like colon colon alpha or there was some. I mean, they were similar, but like not regular expression. Yeah, that's just more regular expressions. They're still there. Those things were still there. Okay. Now, regular expressions, I don't know where they started, but they were already in the first Unix editor, ED. And then they went into EX, which became VI, which became Vim. Perl modified them and extended them. And there's, it's a great example of um, what I like to say about standards. <laughs> the good thing about standards is you have so many to choose from. Huh. All right, moving onward. Um, so my example uses uh, quote A comma dot there, but I use quote A comma quote B. So if you have two marks, you can use them in a range. And oh, I actually did the backslash one. And I forgot about it. Okay. 
been a while. I was supposed to do this two months ago. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so uh, just, and this is the last slide. Um, if you want to put comments in front of things, one way to do it is just do a colon and a range and then do a regular expression where you substitute the beginning of the line, the caret, or if you're doing Ruby, it would be pound and then a blank. That's a blank character with that little line through it. It's supposed to be a blank. And if your lines are left aligned, you can use I and do them as a group. Uh, I mean, you could uh, not do them as a group, but there is a way to do that with the global command, which I've never really figured out. You can apply a VI command to a whole bunch of lines in your file at the same time. It's G. Not the G at the end of the substitute, but a G at the beginning. But I've never used it. And if they're not aligned, you can just, you know, use the insert a pound sign and a blank and then use dot, move to everywhere else and use the dot. And that's it. Any questions? I have a question for you. I tried to use nerd tree for a while. Mm -hmm. Found it really frustrating. Is anybody interested in the presentation doing a presentation on that? I haven't used most of the advanced features of nerd tree for me. It's mostly just it looks uh, you know there's there's that net rw plugin or something that lists the contents when you like accidentally open a directory or something and basically nerd tree was a prettier way to look at that i know there's a way to use it as like a file drawer or something well, like you can ask like a file explorer once but yeah. it's a plugin for it's plugin being, oh, okay. uh, that makes uh working with like having uh, several files in like a project directory easier. It uh, sort of adds in some of that IDE-ness. Yeah, I, know, I, think I tried to use it and just got frustrated. Okay. Uh, Have you used it? I haven't used it, but I showed you guys that. You yeah. can use it. Yeah. I had already tried to use it before then, but... It's like it sounds really familiar, but it's probably from your talk. Yeah. Okay. Well, when I moved my... I got my new computer, which was not that long ago. I never put your tree on it, so I can't bring it up, but... Um, I mean, it's I can I can do some looking into it or yeah, that'd be great. But I haven't I haven't used any of the super fancy stuff I mean, that it can supposedly do myself. I'm trying to learn Rails again, so I'm using Sublime Text because you can have all these files at your basically fingertips whenever you want them, a whole directory tree of stuff. Mm -hmm. And if yeah, I could do that, that would be really nice. And that's what I thought Nerd Tree was supposed to do. Yeah. yeah, you have to set up some stuff. To yeah, you you just need probably properly. you have to change your ladder key or something, and then well, you have to learn that all shortcuts. Yeah, but yeah. then I kept losing windows or having trouble switching from one window to another. And when I opened a new file, it never went into the window I wanted it to go in. You know, I had four sub windows on my screen, and it just was annoying. Right. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, thank you.